So another thing that's important to talk about in our review from the lecture that we talked about this in evolutionary uh, biology is the idea of different types of evolution. Now, one of the most important things you have to know is the difference between convergent evolution and divergent evolution. Now, convergent evolution is going to happen whenever two organisms are exposed to similar kinds of pressure. And so they may tend to evolve similar kinds of or, or of features because it was advantageous on both cases to develop these features. In other words, forms fix function and sometimes there seems to be a best form to perform a function. For example, wings seem to be the best way to guarantee flight among living things. And that's why there are so many kinds of animals that have wings, but their wings are going to be very different because they do not share common ancestors that have wings. In fact, they each develop the wings independently. For example, there are ancestral reptiles like the pterodactyl, which is a type of dinosaur that actually had wings. Like, likewise, there's a mammal with wings. It's the bat. There's also birds, of course, with wings. And there's also bugs with wings, but all of these wings will be different, but all of them have wings. So wings, are, in this case, is an example of what we call a convergent evolution. Likewise, there's a convergent evolution that happened there between mammals and birds, both converge in being endotherms. They both regulate their internal t temperature, even though the most common recent ancestor between birds and the mammals do not have that feature. So typically what a divergent evolution is going to be displayed in things we call analogous structures or structures which are similar because they are s exposed to similar pressures. But they will not share common ancestors that have those features. And typically also they will be not very, be very close at the complexity level. If you actually analyze the complexity, you're going to see there's a lot of differences between the structures even though they are overall fit, fit in the same point. So. Conversion evolution will be what you see here in the B on that one. Over time, two, two, two species will come from different parent species, end up in the same uh, final look because of common pressures. Now, the example of divergent evolution is what we called the adaptive radiation. When you have one ancestral mammal and many different kinds of mammals comes from that. But because they all come from the same ancestor, they will have lots of features which are going to be the same. And we call those features homologous structures, and it's very, very, very indicative of divergent evolution. And that's what you see over there with the A, two different species coming from one species or having common ancestry. Now, the reason that they diverge is because they had different environmental pressures, even though they had the same kind of ancestors. So it's kind of like the exact opposite of convergent evolution. Now, some people also describe the idea of parallel evolution, when the two species are evolving completely separate from each other in completely separate environments from completely separate ancestors, and so there is no relationship apparent between the two of them. Now, another interesting thing that happens in evolution sometimes is that sometimes a trait that is no longer functional is left behind, and we call that vestigial structures. And so, for example, the appendix in humans or the pelvic bone in whales or other structures like that. And there's going to be examples as well of things we call mosaic structures, which are structures which sometimes fulfill a purpose that is different from the purpose that originally led them to evolve. For example, human hands evolved for us to walk because we were tetrapods at some point. So these are not necessarily the best tools for grasping, but we use it for grasping and to manipulate tools. But it's basically on, on bones that are developed for walking. And so we can't completely reinvent the mechanism. We basically change a mechanism that was already there now for a different po per point. And that's a very important concept. It actually proves evolution is a reality because things are not necessarily uh, built different for different purposes. They are actually built off previous existing features. All right. Now, I also want to remind you that adaptive radiation, uh, conversion evolution, mosaic and vestigial structures, analogous structures, homologous structures, all of these things can also be observed at different levels. You see ecological level, at the species level, and even at the molecular levels, looking at DNA and protein sequences. So you can compare this uh, in many different ways to actually see the progress of evolution. So there are similar DNA sequences, different DNA sequences, vestigial DNA sequences, um, and even mosaic DNA se sequences. They are used for many different uh, roles. All right. Another thing that is important to talk about in terms of evolution is how fast evolution actually takes place. So sometimes evolution will take very, very slowly and uh, species will actually gradually separate from each other in a process that's called uh, gradual evolution or gradualism. All right, and this is the process of morphological change over time or speciation over time 
uh, in separation because of isolation and slow differential environmental pressure in two different uh, places. But sometimes it's also possible to have large gaps or quick evolutionary leaps which will occur for because of things like rapid mutation rates or very, very uh, strange genetic drift, bottleneck or father effect kinds of things, or extreme gene flow events, or a very strong selection that is not hindered by other things. This will sometimes call very quick evolutionary uh, transitions, and we call those punctuated equilibrium. All right, and there's a lot of more a variety and, and complexity that we can go into the discussion of these two things, but you will learn about that if one day if you take um, college level evolutionary biology science. All right, now today we actually understand as part of the modern synthesis theory, the same theory that combines genetics and evolution that it's actually a combination of both things that would take place. You know, selection and mutation rates are usually going to be very slow and act over long periods of time. And But gene flow and genetic drift can also change the populations quickly. And so it's possible for that evolution happens by a combination of both things. Right? So those are the types of evolution, and I hope you learn a lot. And on the next video, we're going to talk about variation and its importance for evolution. See you guys then.